Welcome once again, everybody. It's Cannabis News. I'm your host, Joe Claire. It's August 13th, 2019. The show, as always, is presented by the Marijuana Times. You can find us at marijuanatimes.org, a bunch of great stuff there, including this show. If you click the video tab, go and do so. If you want the audio version of the show, go to Apple Podcasts and search the Marijuana Times. Today, we're talking about Arizona and adult use legalization and an attempt that's going to be made there. Also, the growth in the medical marijuana market nationwide which states are growing at a faster rate and such and did you think that adult use legalization was a dead issue for the year in new jersey well so did i but apparently it is not apparently there's still life for adult use legalization in new jersey this year we'll talk about all that coming up but first of course cannabis news is brought to you by nature side nature-side.com and their organic all natural pesticides grow safe and poison free don't use banned pesticides. Be regulatory compliant in the state that you are growing in. Don't put yucky chemicals on things that people are going to be ingesting. That would be awful of you, and it's something you can avoid with NatureSide. Nature-Side.com, proud sponsor of Cannabis News. Thank you, NatureSide. This first story by yours truly at MarijuanaTimes.org. New details released about adult use legalization ballot measure in Arizona. Smart and Safe Arizona. Is attempting to get a measure on the ballot for 2020 in Arizona to legalize adult use, possession, and sales of marijuana. Stacy Pearson, who's a senior vice president with Strategies 360 in Phoenix, she's also a spokesman for or a spokesperson for Smart and Safe Arizona, said, "Quote: and This is a really interesting quote. There's a lot of stuff to to unpack here. Ultimately, we found a policy," she said, "that provides the maximum authority to government to regulate." The maximum penalty for folks that are not complying with the rules, the footprint that people could tolerate, so not a dispensary on every corner. We heard folks loud and clear that they didn't want that. And that would be a substantial amount of revenue for the state and the, pro- and the projects that are critical. We'll start with the first problem, is the phrase, the maximum authority to government to regulate. That's, there's no way that's going to end up well. The worst than that is this. So, not a dispensary on every corner. We heard folks loud and clear that they didn't want that. That would never happen. And this was known in the business as a straw man. They set up something that they can attack. Oh, we don't want a dispensary on every corner. That would never happen. Even under the most unrestricted, unregulated cannabis market, there would not be a retail shop or a dispensary on every corner. Marijuana is popular. D- don't get me wrong. I know better than anyone. But it's not that popular. To sustain a functioning business, which, by the way, oh, God forbid there's a functioning business in every corner, but to sustain a marijuana business on every corner is ludicrous. Obviously, it would be a fraction of the space in the town or the city or the jurisdiction or the state would go to marijuana, and only it would only be supported by the demand that surrounds it. So basically what it is is a reason for them to say, well, since you don't want a dispenser in every corner, which will never happen, but they don't say that, we need the maximum authority for government to regulate, which in the case of this Arizona measure basically means that only established medical marijuana dispensaries, at least initially, are going to be able to sell adult use marijuana in Arizona. It's, they got input from everyone. Uh, you know, they're being uh, backed financially for now by the medical marijuana industry in Arizona. There is a home growing provision in it, six plants per adult, 12 plants for multiple adults in a home, which is very surprising considering the medical marijuana uh, dispensaries are, are are backing this measure. So that's good to see, and hopefully it is part of the final measure, however it gets you know, enough signatures and all that. Hopefully it remains, uh, because that's the best part of the bill. But basically it's a compromise bill that, like I said, they took input from everyone, including uh, the opponents of marijuana legalization. They feel that they'd be able to strike a balance, basically, with a compromise uh, or a series of compromises that will get the maximum amount of votes and or signatures, you know, initially to get it on the ballot and to get it passed. Uh, I mean, I hope it works. I hope they can get legalization, home growing, legalized, and then work on improving after that. Uh, but it's the strategy that they're going with, and we'll see 
of course, how it turns out. Before anything else, they're going to need over 237,000 valid signatures. They do have till July of next year. If you're in Arizona, search Smart and Safe Arizona. They have a website. You can donate and volunteer. And all of that stuff, you know the drill and how this works, especially online. This next story from MJBizDaily.com. Chart medical marijuana markets expanding at varying rates with Oklahoma, Florida setting the pace. If you're watching the video version <clears throat> excuse me, of the show, you see the chart right there, the fastest growing states when it comes to medical marijuana. Oklahoma grew at four point uh, grew um, it represents four point one percent of the state's population. Oklahoma is the fastest growing medical marijuana market in the average number of daily patient increases. Uh, growth is bolstered by low barriers for entry including the fact that there's no list of qualifying conditions for patients. Florida, as you can see there, is the second fastest growing market in terms of patients joining the registry, with registered patients making up 1.6% of the population. You see the growth is in the gray bar, and the percentage of the population is the uh, represented by the, 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 um, the little orange circle. That's the phrase I'm looking for, the orange circle. <laughs> um, there's also going to be further growth in Florida, they point out, which may occur from recent legalization of smokable flour and continued wide access to dispensaries. Um, despite having operational markets for only a few months, Arkansas and Ohio, well, I couldn't say Ohio for a minute, that was weird, have reached a statewide proportion of medical marijuana patients on par with mature markets such as Illinois, New Jersey, and New York. After a strong first year of sales, Maryland's medical marijuana program continues to grow, and regulators are evaluating a second round of business license applications for 10 processors and four cultivators to meet demand in Maryland. So again, you see there with the chart, the different rates of growth. We've talked a lot about Oklahoma on this show and the success story that has occurred there, the minimal amount of red tape and bureaucratic wrangling and two years of making an application for people. Within two months, they were sending out, they were getting applications for businesses, getting dispensaries open, and now you see that they are the fastest growing medical marijuana market in the country for good reason, because they've done it the best out of all the medical marijuana bills, um, except maybe for the, uh, the, with the exception of California in 96, is the most wide open, robust, quickly established medical marijuana law in the country. And it's a good thing. And uh, I would like to say that it would be a model for other states but it doesn't seem to be. It seems to be an anomaly at best. The other states, they're still like, no, I see what's happening in Oklahoma, but no, we're not going to go. We're not going to go that route. We're going to go the long, the long way around. Because that's what most state governments do, except for in Oklahoma. Something happened there. I don't know. It's, it's very weird. It's last story from app.com. New Jersey marijuana legalization. Phil Murphy wants, quote, one more shot, end quote, illegal weed in 2000. 19 rumors of the demise of New Jersey marijuana legalization may have been greatly exaggerated. Government Phil Murphy and Senate President Stephen Sweeney in recent days have said they'd be open to trying to pass a law to legalize weed in the Garden State later this year during the lame duck legislative session after Election Day. I think I've been consistent. I hope we get one more shot at this, Murphy told reporters. Getting something to happen sooner, if we have a real shot at it, I'd be all in. Count me all in to try and work Toward that, last week Sweeney told NJ Advanced Media that he'd make, quote, one more run at legalizing marijuana through the legislative process. The interview came nearly three months after Sweeney announced that legalizing marijuana for recreational purposes wouldn't be realized at this time. Of course, there was a lot of talk about there being a ballot issue in 2020, but apparently there's not a lot of support for that. So now they're backtracking to the legislative idea for the lame duck session after the November elections. We'll see how that goes. I've been burned before. I talked a lot about New Jersey and the big buildup and the hype for adult use legalization there, and then just nothing happened, and I stopped talking about it. But I felt the need to at least give you an update on what's going on that the, the big shots in New Jersey are talking about still, maybe, kind of, sort of, this might happen in a few months. Stay tuned. We'll see. There you go. I'll we'll cover that story. And all the other stories... That we can right here at Cannabis News. We're here five days a week, of course. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Search Marijuana Times there. Click the little notification bell so you know when a new episode when you know when a new episode of Cannabis News has dropped. Thank you to Nature Side, nature-side.com and their organic 
all natural pesticides. Thank you all for watching and listening and sharing these videos and those of you that share us on Apple Podcasts as well. Thank you. We'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News.